Hi, welcome to another video on CSV Kit. Now we're gradually nearing the end of the course, and I'll just be honest, I won't cover every single command that is inside CSV Kit. Rather, I'll choose the ones I use the most, and I'll just show you the rest. So now I'm here on the documentation page, and here they have a section on power tools. So here's essentially four commands. It's CSV join, CSV stack, CSV SQL, and SQL to CSV. So in this video, I'll show you how CSV stack works, but I'll just briefly explain very quickly CSV join and CSV SQL and SQL to CSV so that you know what they do, even though I haven't taught you about them. So CSV join is essentially a tool for merging data. So if you've worked with SQL previously, then you probably know about join queries, and essentially Essentially, CSV join does the same only for CSV files. So if you want to learn about this, then I suggest that you look here in the documentation. Then of course you need more than one data set to do joining with two different data sets. So here you need to fetch one more and you can look through the documentation page here. CSV stack, the second one is the one we'll be doing in this video, so I'll just skip that one. And finally, we also have CSV SQL and SQL to CSV. Essentially these two commands goes from CSV files to SQL files and vice versa. So of course CSV SQL goes from CSV to SQL and SQL to CSV goes from SQL to CSV. Since I don't really presuppose any knowledge about SQL, I don't really want to cover these. I just want to point out something very convenient. If you use CSV SQL here in this way, then you essentially get this create table statement that you need to make to create a table with SQL. And honestly, if you have a CSV file, then first generating this, copying it, and then perhaps modifying it a bit is incredibly time-saving. You might not want this exactly as it is. Maybe here for the, say, federal supply class name, you don't really agree that it should be not null, so you can remove this and so on. Or maybe you disagree about a data type, all well, that's fine, but it's really convenient to have this so that you can just copy it and then make some minor changes. And of course, SQL to CSV is also very convenient. So if you have a SQL database with tables, then you convert your tables essentially to CSV files. Again, I won't cover any of these commands, except of course for the CSV stack in this video. I just wanted to let you know about some of the other commands that you can look into yourself if you want to. Okay, so enough messing around. In this video, I'll talk about CSV stack. And as usual, it's good to go to the help page here. And the short description is stack up the rows from multiple CSV files. I'll not do the grouping thing. I'll just do the pure stacking. And the files are assumed to have the same columns in the same order. So to see why this is really useful, let me just clear the screen. I've made a few files. So I've made a file called bikes1, bikes2, and bikes3. So if we take a look at these, these are very simple. So here you have CSV file with two columns. First one is sold bikes. This has the value 17. So this is simply CSV files, maybe for a specific month that represent bike sales. And if you go and look at the other ones, you can see that it's exactly the same, except that you have, of course, different values. Maybe you can imagine that this is bike sales for January, this is bike sales for February, and this is bike sales for March. Now, say you want to aggregate some statistics. Maybe intuitively you think, yeah, we have this CSV stat command. So we can go to bikes one, but of course, if you only put in bike one, then you get very boring information. Let's look here. Smallest value is 17 for the first column. The largest value is 17. The sum is 17. The mean is 17. The median is 17. Of course, we have only one value. So when we take the CSV stat, we of course want the statistics of all of them. Maybe you think, yeah, okay, but then I can probably just pass in more files here, but this doesn't work. CSV stat only accepts essentially one file. So what we need to do to get the statistics of all of this, which is the interesting part, then we need to combine these CSV files into a single one. And of course, there are graphical user interface ways of doing this. Maybe we can open all three of them in Excel, copy the thing into one file, and then save it as a CSV file, for instance. But we don't want to do that. We only want to use the command line. So to do this, we will use CSV stack. So don't confuse this with CSV stat. Stat is for statistics, stack is for stacking files. And now I can do bikes1.csv, bikes2.csv, and bikes3.csv, just to give you all of them. And when I run this, I get sold bikes and average price. So these are the columns. It's important that the column names for all three files are the same, otherwise this won't work. And here you get quote unquote January data, the February and the March. And now of course it's a lot easier because now I can pass this by piping it into CSV stat. And then I get a lot more interesting information. For instance, for the sold bikes, the sum total of all sold bikes is 50 in this period. And for instance, for the average price, then of course I think the most interesting Interesting thing is the mean here, which is that the average over all three months is 341. 
Essentially, this is all I need to explain to you for CSV stack. I just want to point out one thing that could be problematic in practice. Here you have three files, but imagine that these bike sales were recorded essentially over a period of three years. Then I guess you would have 12 times three, so 36 months. So you would have like bikes one, bikes two, bikes three, all the way up to 36. So of course, if you wanted to do this very manually, you could do like bikes onecsv bike2.csv, bikes 3.csv and go on like bike 4.csv. But of course, this is a lot to write and there has to be a better way. But this better way doesn't involve really anything from CSV kit. This is just some command line nonsense. If you have multiple files and you can essentially write them in a very compact way. So here, let, let's do the case for one, two, three, because that's what I have. Instead of writing three files after each other, I can make here an open curly parenthesis and a closing one. And then I can go one dot dot three. Essentially what this is telling me a command line is that you should first take this expression here, the bikes one to three and expand them into bikes one, bikes two and bikes three and then pass it into CSV stack. So you can see if I run this, I get exactly the same. I mean, there's not that much more to write here with three files, but of course in practice, if you have 36 files, then the only thing you would need to do, of course here is to write 36 and you will get all of them immediately. I don't have 36 files, but if I write this, you can see here that I get essentially the first ones. So one, two, and three, but then I get a file not found error. Essentially, yeah, we can't really find bikes 4.csv. That's not surprising, I haven't made one, but you can see here that it really tries to do what I'm telling it to do. So this essentially unpacking syntax is really convenient. And then of course, afterwards you can pass this into CSV stat or CSV maybe look if you want to look nice and do all kinds of stuff with it. You can filter it by using wrap, you can select certain columns by CSV cut, or you can just save it as a new file again. That's really it for CSV stack, I hope you liked this. In the next video, which will be the final video in this series, we'll look at going from CSV files to JSON files, which I think is very common and very useful to know how to do. So thanks and I'll see you again in the final video next time.